So far, we have analyzed the opinions of several theologians regarding masturbation's guilt. According to the Bible, there are various perspectives on masturbation. It is also important to consider their sense of guilt and the opinions of experts when deciding whether they are guilty of sexual acts, but we must ultimately follow the evidence of the Bible. This time, I will compare masturbation to several Bible verses that define sin. As we explore the connection between sin and the Bible and masturbation, we will learn how closely they are related. First of all, the four Bible verses that define the sins to be recognized in the future have nothing to do with masturbation. Next, let's examine them one by one. According to the theologian, the author of the book cited in this video, two-way efforts are needed to prove masturbation is wrong. Let's start with the formal definition of sin. Therefore, it should be viewed in light of the Bible's definition of sin. A person's guilt can also be determined by referring to the part presented as a list of sinful actions. Let's explore each direction now. Firstly, we can determine the sinfulness of masturbation by examining the Bible passage in which sin is formally defined. In Romans 14:23, James 4:17, 1 John 3:14, and 5:17, the New Testament defines sin. Romans 14:23 is a good place to start. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is a sin. The following two grounds make this passage inappropriate for determining the guilt of masturbation. In the context of this paragraph, raising the issue of masturbation is unreasonable. As if Paul's statement were a hop's conclusion, there were several problems involved. There were primarily relationship conflicts caused by non-essential factors in the believer's lifestyle, especially differences in views on eating illegal food, which Leviticus 11 forbids. Depending on our attitude toward food, food does not make us dirty morally or spiritually. Accordingly, Romans 14:22 makes sense when read in its entirety. So whatever you believe about these things keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. There is also evidence of Paul's confidence in 1 Timothy 4, 4 and Titus 1, 15. As a result, masturbation should not be included in what Romans 14.23 calls everything. As a second point, Romans 14.23 cannot be used to justify masturbation, even if it is taken out of context. It means that if you accept everything that is not followed by faith as a sin, you will face some difficulties. Firstly, if Romans 14.23 is interpreted in this way, entangling masturbation in the Bible becomes rather difficult. The interpretation of Romans 14.23 can be used to deny that masturbation is a sin for those who claim to masturbate but follow faith. Additionally, the objective nature of sin becomes blurred, and the individual's subjective attitude and conscience become the final authority on whether or not sin is guilty. No matter what we think, there are actions in the Bible that are objectively condemned as sins. Accordingly, everything in Romans 14.23 should be interpreted as everything but what the Bible defines as sin. We return to our original question, whether shouting is sinful in the Bible. Thirdly, sin is defined so broadly that many Christians' everyday lives are viewed as sinful. Although generalizing Romans 14.23 is a good way to confirm self-defense guilt, it has resulted in many of our lives and actions being branded as sinful. As a result, Determining whether the high-pitched act is guilty is hardly relevant or important regardless of how Romans 14.23 is interpreted. Let's examine James 4.17 to determine whether masturbation is sinful. The Bible says in James 4.17, If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. What about James 4.17? No matter what method is used, the interpretation of this passage is not very helpful in determining whether masturbation is guilty. Regardless of how James 4.17 is interpreted in context or decontextualized, it does not determine the guilt of masturbation. How about 1 John 3.4 and 5.17? First, let's read these two phrases. Everyone who sins breaks the law, in fact, sin is lawlessness. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. In 1 John 3.4, the word lawlessness means rejecting God's law where God's will is revealed and in 1 John 5:17 describes wrongdoing as being unjust in light of God's holy and righteous standards. Therefore, whether masturbation is a sin depends on whether it is defined as one in God's Word. Thus far, we've examined how the Bible defines sin and masturbation. Consequently, masturbation and the four Bible passages discussed today are irrelevant. There are many other passages in the Bible about sin. Many of them refer to sexual sin. Next time, We'll investigate whether masturbation is included in the Bible's list of sexual sins. Please subscribe to me if today's video was informative.